Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is our fourth video on the introduction of UML, and uh, we're looking at basic continuation of video three. And we're talking about relationships, which are extremely important in UML. Now, objects themselves do not exist by themselves in isolation. They're typically related to something. And you can think of it kind of a code ecosystem, where everything in the system actually interrelates in some way or another. There are cases, obviously, where some things are somewhat isolated, but yet it has to exist in a system. So in addition to the interrelationships of the various parts of your code ecosystem, like a bear eats a fish and a fish eats insects, there are various parts of your code or your ecosystem that have conceptual relationships as well. For example, a fish is a general term which has common attributes and behaviors with many types of fish. And this is called a generalization. As a matter of fact, when you think of generalization, you should think of inheritance. So here's an example of an sense of a generalization of fish from the fish cod, trout, and salmon. And we're going to build this in software modeler's idea. We're going to actually going to use the uh, flowchart diagram tools to show you how to do this. But you think of this in a term that uh, you have your superclass fish and your subclasses salmon, trout, and cod inherit the common characteristics from that superclass. Many times when we work with uh, super and subclasses, we use the concept of extension. So we extend a superclass, for example, to add other fish categories like salmon and trout and cod, uh, tagging onto them the characteristics of that particular fish. So let's go ahead and build this diagram in Software Ideas Modeler. So bring up Software Ideas Modeler. And go ahead and click on File New. And we're going to just call this Flowchart fish, for example. And the author is me. And we'll go flowchart of a fish. And go ahead and save that, then click on flowchart. And when you do, up comes all the uh, tools that you need to draw a nice flowchart. So there's a lot here, not just uh, what we're going to use for diagramming today. So we're just going to drag out a uh, process. And we'll just type in fish. And then we'll drag out three more. This will be cod, salmon, let's move that in place, and trout. And at this point, we can actually draw relationships or flows between the two. So just grab this and move it over and click back on fish and click on the flow and drag it, move it down. And uh, click on fish again and grab flow and drag it over and tag it to trout. And so in a sense you've just uh, drawn kind of a flow diagram using the flowchart uh, tools in in software ideas modeler. So go ahead and save that. And when you're done, let's move back to the class notes. So creating this actual diagram was pretty simple in ideas modeler, but it just shows you all the many things that you can do and how easy they are to do in that particular software package. So get familiar with that and use that in your work to actually rapidly create uh, prototypes for your software. So along with uh, extensions, there are also other types of relationships, and one is called an association. And that means that two classes are related in some way, and there's many types of associations. Uh, you can think of an association in the sense of plugging uh, your iPod into your TV. And so, so suddenly you associate your iPod with your TV, and when you play your iPod, you play basically a movie from your iPod to your TV. And in that sense, they're related basically by passing information one to another. You could also have one class act upon another, like in your ecosystem, a frog could eat a fly. Or you could have sets of classes acting together to perform a task. There are other types of relationships as well, such as aggregation and composition and multiplicity. Aggregation uh, indicates a relationship between a whole and its parts. For example, a seminar is composed of attendees. Or a school of fish is proposed of a fish. And so you can see if the fish swims away or if the attendee leaves the conference uh, or if the conference shuts down, the fish and the attendees still survive. But in the composition, that's a much stronger aggregation. And uh, for example, if the whole is destroyed, so is its parts. And so you can think of this in terms of uh, a house that has furniture in it. If you destroy that house, the furniture is destroyed as well. And we'll expand upon these concepts as we move along in this course. A very important uh, relationship, of course, is that of multiplicity. And the three big multiplicities are one-to-one, one-to-many, one -many, and many-to-many. -many. Now you can think of one-to-one -one as uh, one class occupies one classroom. One-to-many, uh, one teacher teaches many classes. But many-to-many -many takes the combination of two one-to-many processes. So you can think of uh, one teacher teaches many students, and you're going to join to that one student learns from many teachers. 
and that equals many teachers teach many students. So you have a many to many. And so such relationships like this are very important when it comes to creating databases. And I actually love SQL Server 2008. I love creating my databases in it. It has a very graphical interface. You can actually so you can graphically draw and build interfaces very rapidly. But using these concepts of relationships, one to many and many to many and one to one, are very important. Now one more final concept of relationship we want to talk about, and that is polymorphism. And polymorphism means the ability to make many different forms. And it really lies in the structure of the superclass. Whenever you pass uh, something from a superclass to its subclasses, if in the superclass there's a common element, that common element can be treated the same. And I'm going to explain this in a moment. But basically, let's just look at the diagram. You have a fish, and you have a salmon, a trout, and a cod, and they all have the characteristics that they can blow bubbles. And that would actually exist in the uh, superclass. They're all derived from the same superclass. So a polymorphic object is one whose true type hides within a superclass. Blow bubble is the same operation for each fish subtype, so in this case, you can refer directly to the fish class. And this really is the key to what we want to accomplish, because in a polymorphic operation, the operation may be carried out in different ways based on the class of the object that is doing the operation. Polymorphism allows you to treat the derived class members in the same way as their parents' class members. This allows for such things as polymorphic arrays. This lets objects of different types respond to the method calls of the same method with each object responding with the appropriate behavior of its type. Now, that's a lot of mumbo jumbo, but let me put it in terms you can understand. You can think in terms of if a bird can breathe and a fish can breathe, but these are very different uh, animals, correct? But in polymorphism, the concept of breathe is the same for the superclass. So when you put these two in a polymorphic array, since they are derived from the same superclass, when you hit breathe, the bird breathes and the fish breathes, even though they breathe very differently. So polymorphism lets us handle both in a similar way, though they are different, since they descend from a superclass, which has the breath operation. So, so let's summarize the relationships that you'll find in UML. And this comes from refcard.dzone.com. And one is a simple dependency, and it's a weak uh, relationship that happens every once in a while where class A every once in a while uses class B. So we say it uses a class. A stronger relationship is an association. So uh, basically, it's a solid relationship that indicates a class retains a reference to another class over time. So it has a class. A Class A has a relationship to class B. An aggregation is even a stronger relationship more specific than association. This indicates that a class is a container or collection of other classes. The contained classes do not have a life cycle dependency on the container. Basically, that means if you destroy the class, it doesn't destroy the classes within inside itself. For example, a company might contain the class employees, but if you destroy the company, the class employees still exist. Even stronger than aggregation is composition. Composition means it's a part of classes. So more specific than aggregation, this indicates a strong life cycle dependency. So when the container is destroyed, so are all the other containers. Finally, we discussed generalization, which basically is inheritance. And you can see right here, the class Ford can be derived or inherits from the class car. And so that's a summary of uh, relationships. And next time, we'll get into the meat of UML. So what did you learn today? Basically, you learned about classes and objects and how they are interrelated and how UML is used to represent these objects and classes using class diagrams. Well, thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. This was Mike Lively.